Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I thought I'd tell you about my labour and delivery story because it was a really positive one and I know when I was pregnant I was looking around on YouTube for ages trying to find positive labour um, and delivery stories because most of them just scared me um, and made me even more anxious but when I did find a positive one it made me a lot more relaxed and um, thinking oh okay well if that lady's had a positive experience perhaps I will. I had my daughter Rose two years ago and she was 12 days late. I had to be induced. Um, so she was due on the 2nd of October 2015 and she was born on the 14th of October 2015. I had a completely normal pregnancy. Um, everything was fine, all the checks were normal. Um, baby was moving around loads, so it, it, was, it was a good pregnancy. I had a bit of sickness at the beginning, but other than that, I was fine. Um, so when my due date finally arrived, I think everyone seems to think, oh my God, the baby's gonna be born today because it's my due date. But actually, I think only like 5% of babies are actually born on their due date. Um, so mine came and went, and then the next day came and went and we were doing everything we could to try and um, bring the baby on. My mum was taking me on bumpy car journeys because apparently that helps. Uh, I was drinking raspberry leaf tea by the gallon, which actually did help me um, with the pushing, I think, because I'm not an active person um, and I'm not fit, really. So um, I was really worried about the pushing, but the raspberry leaf tea, I think it really did help to like tone my muscles and strengthen them in my stomach um, to help push. So I would recommend that. Um, yes, yeah, so I was drinking all of these, um, all this tea. I was eating pineapple, having a curry. Nothing was bringing the baby on. So the midwife put me in to have a sweep. And so I went for the sweep, and she said, "Yeah, great. Um, I've, you, you're now dilated to two centimeters." So I was like, "Oh, okay, that's good." Um, she said, "You could probably come in tonight." So then all day I was waiting and waiting and nothing happened. And every time I felt a twinge, I thought, oh, here we go, here we go, but then it would just go. So um, the next day, day came and went and still nothing. So then they booked me in for another sweep, which I had, which was really painful. That bit was actually worse than the birth for me. And um, probably because I didn't have any pain relief though. And nothing happened again. So then we get to 10 days overdue and they say, look, the longest we let you go without being induced is 12 days. I was asking to be induced the whole time, but they wouldn't let me. So they said, we'll induce you on your 12th day. So I was booked in at 12 noon um, to be induced. Went there and they strapped me up to the machine and did all my observations and everything. And then they um, gave me the, the pessary, um, which is like a tampon really that, um, has got like a gel on which sort of helps ripen the cervix. Um, so they gave me that and then my mum, then they said, right, you'll probably wait here for about three, four hours and then go home. And then once something happens, um, give us a ring and come back in. So my mum went off to have a sandwich and me and my husband went for a walk around the, ho the hospital because they said that could help. So we've been walking about 20 minutes and all of a sudden I start feeling period pains coming on. So I was thinking, okay, it could just be like those normal twinges I've been having. But then I said to Frankie, no, these are, I think it's happening. These are quite persistent now. So the whole journey back to the route, to our ward, where we were, I was um, having these pains. So I finally got back to the ward and by the time I was there, I was like leaning over on the bed, having to lean over where it was painful. Um, they were like, the only way I can describe it is like period pains, but really 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 bad ones they weren't i wasn't screaming i wasn't crying um but they were bad period pain. frankie my husband started timing them on his phone and they were um sort of very very close together at that point i was saying right i need something now it's it's, it's, hurt, it's hurting me now i need some pain relief because my birthing plan was just to have an epidural basically i didn't really have a birthing plan i just knew that i wanted an epidural that was something that um i'd had my mind set on i'm not good with pain and um, I really, really panic. So I thought having the epidural would be the best bet. So 
at this point I said, right, I need something now. I need some gas and air, I need some pain relief, I need something. So then the midwife came in, and I think sometimes when you're a first time mum, they, they sort of think you're overreacting, which is really annoying because I could feel what my body was doing. And I know I hadn't done it before, but I knew that I hadn't felt these pains before either. So she sort of said, oh, well, take these two paracetamol and go and have a um, bath in this like communal bath thing. So I took the two paracetamol and I walked over to see what the bath was like and I just could not get in it, no way. So I didn't do the bath, I just went back to the bed and held over um, in my position, my leaning over position. And then um, their pains kept getting worse and worse and then Frankie said, look, can you examine her? So they examined me. And I had a trainee midwife with me all the whole uh, the whole time. So every time I was examined, which is uncomfortable, I had to be examined again because the trainee midwife would examine me first and then the proper trained midwife would check that she got it right. So that was really annoying because you don't want to be examined more than you need to be really. But I know that everyone needs to learn. So I was happy I could help um, with the midwife's training. So after that, they somebody said, oh my gosh, congratulations, you're five centimetres dilated. You can go down to the delivery ward. You're in active labour. So I was like, yes, I couldn't wait. I just left everything, run down to the delivery suite before the next contraction started. And I said, okay, I need my epidural now. I'm here, I'm ready, I'm five centimetres, let's have the epidural. So I had to wait for about 20 minutes and the man came in, gave me the epidural, which didn't hurt. They just... Um, put some like anaesthetic around the around the area. So at this point, um, my mum was there, my mum was back, um, Frankie was there, and my youngest sister Lily was there. So we were all sort of waiting, I was drifting in and out of sleep. I was also having the gas and air when the contractions came, um, because I am a wimp, and because I just didn't want to feel any pain. So the gas and air just sort of made me feel like I was really, really drunk, like, when you get drunk and your head sort of spins like this, that's what I felt like. So the epidural was good because I could still walk around. So they did they did a really good job because I couldn't feel anything, but um, I could still feel my legs slightly and I was able to move around, which I think helped the um, contractions. So after about three to four hours, so it was probably now about five o'clock in the of evening. And they examined me again and they said, okay, you're eight centimetres, you're nearly there. We just carried on for the next two hours, sort of walking around, talking, sleeping. And then she examined me and she said, you're 10 centimetres, you can stop pushing now. And I thought, oh my God, does... And I thought, oh my God, oh, okay, just like that. I, I thought I was gonna have like a half an hour warning to, about when to start pushing, but it was almost like, you're 10 now. Okay, push on the next contraction. I didn't know what to do. And at this point, my other sister had arrived. So for some, I don't know how this managed to happen, but my husband, my mum, and my two sisters were all in the room with me. <laughs> my mum was sort of the worst birthing partner because she was so scared. And I suppose seeing a daughter and daughter like that, like on the hospital bed is, is awful. So she was sort of like cowering behind the bed, trying to help. My husband was amazing, holding my hand, supporting me the whole way. And my two sisters were really, really good as well. But the main person I was looking at was that midwife because I knew I'm just gonna, she knows what she's doing. I know I'm just gonna do exactly what she says and hopefully it all will be okay. So I started pushing and pushing and it was fine. I, like I said, I think that raspberry leaf tea really helped me because she said each push I was doing, I was really like making the baby move down. So um, I was pushing and pushing and then I think I was pushing for 20 minutes and then out she came and she was beautiful we didn't know she was a girl um so that was a really really nice surprise that was rose's story i hope you enjoyed watching and i, I really hope that it gave you some positive thoughts about um birth and um about giving birth and what to expect because all every every birth is different but they're not all really really bad some of them are really positive and really really good so just go in with an open mind and um hopefully you'll have a really good experience as well